Hi, I'm Alistair. I'm an escape room designer. And one of my current projects is a 1990s themed escape room where players encounter a number of three and a half inch floppy disks that they need to insert into a computer and read the data from. Now, when I was researching how to do this, I came across a GitHub project called Arduino FDC. And that turns an Arduino into a genuine floppy drive controller. I tried it and it works. You can read and write an MS-DOS formatted floppy disk with an Arduino. But floppy disks are obsolete technology and the magnetic media contained inside them is pretty fragile, especially in an escape room where you've got lots of high powered magnets around. So I decided to fake it instead. And what I did is I modified the floppy disk and removed the magnetic film from inside and replaced it with an RFID tag instead. And what this means is that now if I have an RFID reader and I hold my disk up next to it, it can read the tag and the contents of that card and I can read and write to that card just as if it were a genuine floppy disk. In this video, I'm going to show how I made it. So here's my disk, and if you've used one of these before, you'll be familiar with the metal shutter mechanism on the top. So when you insert the disk, this gets pulled back, and the drive motor rotates this hub underneath to spin the disk around and read all the data. And I want to try and retain this mechanism if I can, because I think it's uh, one of the most satisfying parts of a disc, but it is a bit fiddly. So I'm going to show you the technique I used and hopefully it will work. So it's only very thin metal and you want to be careful not to bend it. So rather than use a screwdriver, I'm just going to insert a zip tie underneath. And this is actually a technique I found on another YouTube video I saw. I'm just going to slide it up to the top and when it gets near the top hopefully that shutter should just pop out of the grooves it was running on and then if I wiggle it the last bit I should be able to pull it free from the disc like that and there we have it so I've managed to get it off without bending the metal there now there's a little spring just here that's what pushes the shutter back so we're going to be careful to try to leave that in place and now what we need to do is crack open the disc itself um, so there's no screws, it's actually got um, sort of pop fittings in each of the corners. So I'm just going to try and slide my fingernail in between uh, the two sides and work my way around just the edges like there to the corner. That side's open. Uh, and just get that corner open as well. Now I don't actually need to open it all the way, I just need to get it open far enough so that I can pull out the magnetic platter from inside and there it is. So you can see it's very flimsy, um, presumably this is why they call it a floppy disk. And now we've got this hole left in the middle here and that's where we're going to insert our RFID tag. So what we need to do now is just put the metal shutter back on again. Uh, so this is also a bit fiddly so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push that spring back a little bit again so it's under a little bit of tension and then I need to feed that into this little hole at the top of the shutter here there's like a little hook inside I'm just going to hook the end of that spring around there so it's in place there and then I'm just going to with that holding in, we're just going to push that down onto the disc and hopefully it should just snap into place and there we go and we've got our shutter mechanism working again and we've got a perfect sized gap left for an RFID tag on the underneath. So here is an RFID fob. Uh, this is a very common ISO 14443 fob uh, often comes supplied with RFID readers and I'm just going to prise the back of it off to show you what's inside. So this just uh, pops off with a little screwdriver there and if I just remove this cover here you can see there is a chip in the middle and the copper coil that goes around the outside there that's the antenna and that antenna conveniently is almost the perfect diameter 
to fit in the hole that we left in our floppy disk. So what we need to do is to remove uh, that antenna and the chip itself from the fob. Now sometimes you can prise these out. It's on like a little plastic film and if you're lucky you can actually uh, prise it out but I'm not sure that one's going to work. So instead I've just got some scissors and I'm simply going to um, cut it out. Um, oh, there might be bits of plastic uh, pinging around the place. I should probably be a little bit careful of that. So um, I'm just cutting this with, with normal scissors. I'm going close to the uh, edge of the copper core, but I've got to be very careful not to actually cut into it because that is the antenna that is used for the RFID signals itself. Um, let's try and go from this side instead. Uh, you could probably find this a little bit easier to do if I was um, using a, a Stanley knife or, or something like that instead. Um, these are just regular household scissors, but they are doing the job. So hopefully, if I get a little bit further around, what I'm going to try and do is actually separate the uh, tag and the antenna from the rest of the plastic. Uh, and hopefully... Nearly there, I think. There we go. So there it is. That is the complete circuitry inside one of those RFID tags. The rest is all just plastic. Uh, and you see it's on a, a little sort of film there. And it sits perfectly on our modified floppy disk just there. And now you can place the cover back on top. Now if you don't have an original floppy disk or if you don't want to take one apart to modify it, uh, you can 3D print one instead and that's what I did here. So this is a model which I have in Blender and it matches the dimensions of a genuine floppy disk in every respect. The only thing it doesn't have is it doesn't have that satisfying metal shutter at the top that pings back and releases, but otherwise it works functionally exactly the same way. You can still embed an RFID tag inside it and it will work for the puzzle just as well. Now if you want to know how I use these floppy disks in the puzzle and escape room, I'll be showing you that in the next video, so be sure to come back and watch that. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.